So in this video, a railway engine of mass 10,000 kilos pulls a carriage of mass 2,000 kilos along a straight horizontal track. Resistances to motion are constant at 800 newtons on the engine and 150 newtons on the carriage. Right, let's draw a diagram, okay, so we can see what's going on. Right, here is the railway engine. Here is the coupling. Here is the carriage. Okay, right, now the weight of the engine is uh, 10,000 G. There's going to be a normal reaction force, that's for the engine. And for the carriage, we've got a mass of 2,000 kilos, so weight of 2,000 G. And a normal reaction force on the carriage. Okay. Uh, resistances to motion are constant at 800 newtons. Uh, so 800 newtons for the engine and 150 newtons for the carriage. I'll write that just slightly below so it's not in the way. Okay, then we've got this tension in the coupling. Okay. Um, so, this is the situation that we have, okay, um, we're also to find the magnitude of the force in the coupling between the engine and the carriage when they are travelling with constant speed, okay, so that would mean that the acceleration would be zero, okay, so there must be some uh, propulsive force that's pulling the uh, carriage along, okay? So we're going to call that P, okay? That's for the engine pulling the trailer along. Now, because we know it's constant speed, that means the acceleration is zero. So if I just look at the carriage, okay, and I resolve horizontally, taking to the right as positive, then I've got the tension T, take away the 150, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, okay? Which is just going to be zero, because the acceleration is zero. So that means that the tension is 150 newtons. Okay? So that's the answer to part A. Part B, a breaking force, so let's put that as A. Part B, a braking force is applied to the engine with the result that the engine and carriage decelerate at a constant rate of 0.4 metres per second per second. Okay, so now we have this braking force. Okay, so we've got this braking force, let's call it B, and we're now accelerating at minus 0.4 meters per second per second. Okay, so we are decelerating at 0.4 meters per second per second. Okay, we're asked to find the magnitude of the force in the coupling. Right, so if we uh, set up an equation for the uh, railway engine, Okay, so if we go for the engine and we resolve horizontally, okay, then I've got nothing going towards the right. I've got the B working against me, so I've got minus B, I've got minus T, I've got minus 800 is equal to the mass, 10,000, times the acceleration, which is minus 0.4. So 10,000 times by minus 0.4 is minus 4,000. Okay, so this is what I've got. So let's simplify this. Um, so if I add the 800 to both sides, I'm going to get minus 3,200 is minus b minus t. If I multiply everything by minus 1, I'm going to get b plus t is uh, 3,200. Okay, so that's what I've got for that equation. Now, as for the carriage, 
If I resolve horizontally again, taking to the right is positive. Then I've got the tension working in that direction. Take away the 150 is equal to its mass, 2,000, times the acceleration, which is minus 0 0.4. So 2,000 times by minus 0 0.4 is minus 800. So add the 150 to both sides, and we're going to get the tension as minus 650 newtons. OK. So um, where we were asked to find the magnitude of the force in the coupling, the actual magnitude is uh, 650 newtons, OK? So um, the reason why uh, we've got this negative tension here is because, uh, because the engine is uh, decelerating, the carriage, which was um, initially kind of going faster, OK, is now pushing against uh, the engine. And subsequently, it's not that the engine is pulling the carriage along. Now the carriage is pushing into the engine. And that tow bar, the coupling, OK, the, te the tension in has turned into a thrust, into a compression. OK, and it's trying to actually now push uh, the carriage and the engine back apart. And that's why the tension's coming up as a negative um, here because actually it's working in the opposite direction. So the actual picture that we have here is really that the tension is working in that direction as well, as instead, so uh, a thrust, rather. So now that we have that, OK, we have that minus 650, what we can do is we can add that back in here to find out B, OK? So, for part two of this problem, which asks us to find the braking force applied by the engine, I've got B minus 650 is equal to 3,200. And so B is equal to 3,850 newtons. So that is the braking force of the, uh, of the railway engine um, as required for that question.